Hey guys, Robert 3D Print Skin. So today's video is going to be on the Creality Sonic Pad, uh, more of an intro video on it. I'm going to cover unboxing, uh, going through the initial setup, and how to kick off your first print. I do plan on making additional videos covering the web interface, uh, some of the speed differences with Clipper versus Marlin using uh, the Sonic Pad, and a couple other videos as well, just depending upon the interest and what you guys are looking for. I will say overall, I am pretty impressed with the device. I like this much better uh, than like the Creality touchscreen, for example. Um, it does do a lot more, but it is more expensive, so it depends what you're looking for. Uh, that said, in most cases, this could replace OctoPrint. Uh, you can connect to it remotely from your computer, which I'll uh, show you in another video. Uh, but there's the web interface, it has a webcam hookup. I mean, it can do quite a bit, so it's a pretty nice device. It's also worth mentioning that I do recommend that you connect it to your network, whether you're using Wi-Fi or an Ethernet port. Uh, there's a lot of functionality um, that requires that network connection, such as the firmware upgrade, uh, connecting to Creality to get different um, STL files or 3D objects. Uh, so if you're not planning on uh, connecting this to your network, uh, you're going to lose pretty much most of the functionality. You're going to have to fall back to USB sticks or SD cards to pretty much do anything. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So before we get started, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help the channel grow. And if you have any questions about what I covered in the video or would like to see any other videos, uh, go to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right, guys, so here's the Creality Pad I picked up. Um, I'll go ahead and link to it in the description below if you're interested. But first things first, let's go ahead and open up the box and take a look to see what we got in there. Firstly, we can tell that it's decently packaged. We've got foam at the top and everything is pretty squared away in here. Uh, we've got some interesting stickers it came with. I'll probably be giving these to the kids. Uh, the Creality card here and then the screen itself. All right, so after taking this out of the wrapper here, you can see that the screen is a decent size. Uh, you'll be able to see everything that's going on. It is relatively thick, um, so you have to be able to Think about where you want to put this. Um, if you have a table like this or you have extra space around it, you're just going to set it off to the side. It has some nice little kickstands here. Uh, you just kick them up like this and uh, it will just sit there. Um, if you don't have the extra space around it, you might have to look at potentially mounting this to a wall or something like that. But I plan on just setting it off to the side next to it. But setting this off to the side here, let's go and take a look at the next thing. So this is just the user manual I believe in here. Which is decently thick. Uh, I'm not sure I'm using this too much, uh, but in case you do need it, they do have the user manual. Then over here, we've got another box with all the accessories in it. Uh, so different plug adapters, uh, depending upon where you're at. Uh, the power cable itself, which will use the universal adapters. Uh, USB cable and some other cables in here and then we have a USB stick here which I'm assuming has some of the software we need on it a couple uh, USB adapters and some screws all right so let's gonna get this box out of the way then I'm gonna do a quick close-up on the device itself before power on okay so here's the screen itself on the one side here we've got a couple USB ports on the other side we have a power button then flipping it over on the back here we got our power port another usb port a port for our webcam a lan port if you want to do a hard wire this does have wi-fi and an additional sensor port here which we'll talk about as part of the setup so let's go ahead and plug this in and get started all right guys as i mentioned this is a universal power adapter here uh, so we got to use the adapter for our country on it uh, i'm in the u.s so i'm going to use the u.s adapter here it just kind of pops in and it will slide and click. Now we can just plug this in. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. And we are going to boot up with the Creality screen. All right, so let's run through the initial setup here. Uh, we need to select our language. I don't think it gives you many choices. You got English or I think that's Chinese. Just go ahead and hit next. 
you have to accept their privacy policy. I'm sure everybody here is going to go through and read this just like I just did. Oh, and go ahead and hit next step and select your region. I am in uh, US East Coast specifically, so I'll look for one of those. They apparently have a lot of regions here. America. America, New York here is going to be East Coast, so I'm going to select that and then hit next. Now, this is going to connect you to the Wi-Fi network. If you are planning on going that route, I would recommend it because it gives you a lot of extra functionality. Uh, so I'm going to connect it to my Internet of Things network. So let me go and get the password for that and I would connect it real quick. Okay, now we're connected, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit next step. And then you can change your name here. Uh, Creality Sonic Pad is default. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. That's fine for me. If you have multiple ones, though, uh, this would be a good time to go ahead and change your name so you can easily identify which one's which. Now we need to select our printer. So I'm going to be connecting this to my Ender 3 V2 now uh, for this example. So I'm going to find that. Uh, I do not have the ABL, so I've got the Ender 3 V2 with the 422 board without the ABL. So I'm going to select this and hit next step. Now we need to enter the SD card so I can write the firmware to it. I'm going to use the one that came with my printer. So it's got the USB to SD converter and then the SD card in here. So I'm just going to plug it in on the side. It shows you which port to plug it into. And then hit flash firmware. All right, now it's giving you the instructions on how to actually flash the firmware. If you haven't done this before, we're just going to take this out, put it into the printer, and turn the printer on after it's entered. So I'm going to do that really quick. I went ahead and took the uh, SD card out of the Sonic Pad. I'm going to put it in the printer, make sure it's powered off like it said, and then go ahead and hit next. Now it says powered on, and then hit next. I do like that it's giving you these step-by-step -step directions and it's pretty nice. Alright, now it wants us to connect the Sonic Pad to the printer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, using the USB cable it came with here. Alright, now that that's connected, I'm going to hit next. And so the printer is now updated and it wants to go through the self-test. The self-test can take some time. Uh, if you go through the entire process all at once, it's saying it can take up to 30 minutes. So I'll try to be as thorough as I can during this process, but only provide you guys with the relevant steps. Right, so let's go ahead and hit start self-test. So here, uh, we're just gonna follow through what it says. It's asking if the hot end fan is on. Uh, which it is and it's spinning properly, so we'll hit next step. Yep. Now it's asking if the printing cooling fan has started. Um, I heard it start up and if I put my finger here, I can feel a little bit of air being pulled. Uh, so we're good to go there. So I'm going to hit next. Okay, now it's going to walk through the leveling process. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see this a bit better. Uh, so you saw I went ahead and clicked button one for the leveling process. It does go pretty low. Um, so I had to grab the build plate pretty quickly and lower it manually unless it's going to be pushing into it. So now that I did that, I'm just going to tighten it up. And then we want to be able to get a piece of paper through there. Um, so that little Creality card that came with the set, I like using those because it's a decent thickness. So I grab that. Then I'm just going to slide that under and just get to a point where it can slide under pretty easily. And I know right now nothing is preheated, but that's fine for the time being. 
All right, so that one's good. We're gonna hit number two. And then I'm just gonna keep an eye on this, make sure it's not gonna hit it, and push it down if it is, it would have. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten this a bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and do number three. That one's good as well. Head number four. All right, that's good as well. So we're just gonna hit next step here. All right, now that I went through the final setup there, you can see that it's in the screen. Uh, first thing I want to go ahead and do is check to see if there are any updates. All right, so we're going to go to configure here, go to other settings, and then everything that we set in the original setup process is all configurable again in here. Uh, but just go to system update. So we do have a new version available. It shows that we're on 1.0.6.32.85, where 6.43.28 is available. So this is pretty neat that we can just go and hit download. It's going to download it to the Sonic Pad, and then we'll be able to flash it uh, just like that. I don't have to worry about SD cards or anything. Um, if you opt it to not use an internet connection, though, you won't be able to do this. And I think you're going to have other functionality that's pretty limited as well. Um, so I would recommend going with an internet connection. Um, I ended up using my Internet of Things connection just because I don't know how secure this is. So I'll keep away from my main network. If that's an option for you, I would recommend going that route. Um, but if it's not, you should be fine. Now that it pretty much downloaded it here in a second, you should see it go ahead and restart. All right, now it's asking to run through the setup again. It should have already had all of these settings from the previous pass through. Uh, it is wanting to flash the firmware again, so I'm gonna run through that as well really quick. All right, um, that successfully updated. One thing I wanted to make a note of here is this time I had to switch it from port three on the back to port one, specifically showed port one here. Then you can view the schematic uh, where port one is. Um, I guess that's a change with the newer firmware. When I went through it the first time, that was not required. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're going through. All right, next step. And it, you can do the self tests again, making sure that you hear everything. The fans are good. That fan kicked on. And it's going to home it again, so you can do your leveling, which should be in the same spot as before, unless something changed. Let's just go to spot one. That's good. I think if we go hit all the spots, we'll be okay. Or you can just go to hit next step. Um, your choice. All 
Uh, since it is pretty clear that it did save the settings, I'm just going to skip the rest of this. Uh, but you can go back through and redo it if you want. Now we're back in. Next thing we're going to do is kick off a test print. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and kick off a test print. I'm going to turn the screen back on. All right, the screen's back on. One thing I wanted to point out is you will see the Creality screen light up. Um, it's just getting power from the Sonic Pad, so make sure you actually turn your printer on. And then if we go to print here, actually, let me zoom in a little bit more on the screen itself. Right, if we go into print, you have the choice of local, so if you have anything on the actual device, so if you send it from the web interface, which I'll be doing another video on, a USB drive or Creality Cloud. I'm gonna go to Creality Cloud. Um, one thing to point out here is you do have to have internet connection to this, so you have to either be using a, a ethernet cable or a Wi-Fi, and you do have to set up an account. So first time you go to click on one of these, uh, it's going to ask you for an account. The easiest way to do it is just to do, uh, I think it was instant account, and it asks you for your phone number, it sends you a code, put the code in, and then you're logged in. So I'm just going to search for a cube. And then we'll just do like a little calibration cube here. Now, if somebody already sliced it, you'll be able to go here, and then it will give you um, some slicing options if you if they have it available online. Or you can just go ahead and click this button here, and it'll bring you to the built-in slicer, uh, which is pretty neat. So it's just going to bring it down. You can choose your profile. It's going to go based on the profile you had selected when you set this up. So in my case, it has the Ender 3 V2 settings in there. Um, you can choose your filaments. So by default, it's uh, PLA here. And then some other things, uh, you can change the scale and such. Like I said, I'm going to be doing more videos covering some of the built-in options a bit more, especially the web interface. It is pretty cool. Um, but let's just go ahead and hit slice. Okay, so now we have that sliced. And just go ahead and hit print. And that's going to send it to the printer. Now we should be able to see everything start to heat up. It's going to give us our time. It gives a current speed and everything as well. So when you're slicing through Cura, if you're just using the Marlin firmware or the built-in Creality firmware, you're going at about uh, 50 millimeters a second for speed. I believe this sets you up at 160. So it's gonna be significantly quicker. Uh, I'll be doing some speed comparison tests as well. But that's really all there is to this. Now it's just gonna send it to the printer. Assuming you have the leveling right, it's going to kick everything off and uh, give you a print. And then if you have to stop, you can just go ahead and hit stop and that will immediately stop it for you. <clears throat> the last thing I wanted to show you here really quick is uh, all your print history and any files that you've sliced on this device is gonna be under local until you actually delete it. So when I slice that cube, it's now under local. I can just kick that off instead of having to go back in and re-download, re-slice it. All right, guys, so that covers getting started with the Sonic Pad. I showed you everything you need to uh, take it out of the box, get it working, and kick off your first print. Uh, overall, the process was really simple for what it is, especially switching from uh, Creality or Marlin over to Clipper Firmware. Uh, they integrated most of that into it, and it is pretty seamless, which is pretty nice. Uh, I have to say, so far, I am pretty impressed with the device. The price point is a little on the higher side, uh, but if you're looking at also replacing Octoprint and you won't have to buy a, a Raspberry Pi or one of the generic versions, so it could end up being a decent trade-off for upgrading your printer if you were planning on doing uh, the remote connectivity with Octoprint and that type of stuff because you have to get additional hardware where this has everything built in it. Uh, I will be doing more videos covering the web interface, uh, some speed tests, uh, and then any other videos you guys uh, would like to see, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get those done as well.